we have somebody here that has never used Python before, but I think the story will change after this class though. I will try to, you know, try to catch up. I'll try to help her catch up with us so she's not lost. But, um, so Python, like you've been hearing, okay, is just a programming language. All right. And it's currently one of the most popular programming languages in the world, like one of the most popular. Before you mention five top programming languages in the world, Python is always, always at the top of it there. Okay. Although the other programming languages too that are doing really good, but our focus is on Python. All right. So Python was created by um, Gudu Van Rusum and this was released in the year 1991. Okay, it's not really, I think it's older than most languages save. It's a bit older than C sharp. Okay, it was, now it is, you can use Python for a lot, a lot, and a lot of things. Okay, a lot of fields experts apply Python. Talk about web development. For those of us who want to go into backend development, talk about um, general software development, talk about mathematics. That's where your data science, data analysis, and all of that come into play. Okay. And Python is used by big tech companies, okay, the likes of Microsoft. And that is why at the point itself, Microsoft had to contribute really well to the growth of Python because they were using it well. So the likes of Microsoft, Google, Facebook, NASA, name it. I'm not a big company myself though, but I used Python. And funny enough, Python is not even my main language, but I've discovered that most of, whenever I want to do anything that has to do with automation, Python is always the go-to language. And that's why as a developer, if you are going to have a second language, if there is one language I feel every developer should at least know, um, in addition to other languages, Python will be that language I will tell you to know. And for those of you who are picking it as a first language, kudos to you. All right. Now, the most recent version of Python is Python 3, which we'll be using for this class. Okay, that's what I have installed. And for those of you that followed the video, the, the description was also to install Python 3. Now, why Python? Of course, Python works on different platforms. Okay, it starts from Windows, Mac, Linux, Raspberry Pi, etc. Python runs on all of these platforms. Now, there are some programming languages that are platform dependent. What this means is that they only run on a particular operating system. For example, at a point, C, C Sharp used to run on only Windows. And then for Mac too, there are some programming languages that only run on Mac, for example, like Swift and so on and so forth. But Python runs on all platforms, which makes it good. As a developer now, either I'm coding on the Windows PC or I'm coding on the Mac PC, I can still use Python. And of course, Python has a simple syntax, okay? the English language but I, I think this is true this is partially true for most programming languages you know for those of us who did computer science or who have heard of this term um, the different levels of programming languages we know we have you know we used to have low level language um, um, okay assembly language then low level language and then high level languages Python of course, it's one of those languages. But one thing that makes Python stand out really well is that Python has a really, really, really simple syntax. Okay, like really, really, really simple syntax. And it's very easy for beginners to catch along with it. Although there is a curve, there's actually one part of Python. Okay, that although I, I think we'll cover that in this class, that is indentation. That's what most beginners actually struggle with. But we'll look at it. Okay, and again, Python has a syntax that al allows developers to write programs with fewer lines of code. That one is true. You will see some programming languages, when they want to do a particular thing, they might write up to 10 lines. But when you are doing it in Python, you write like five or six. And that's because Python has abstracted a lot or some of the hard work or some of the complexity Okay, and made the language simple for beginners to use. And that's why somebody can stand up today and say, I want to learn Python. And he would easily pick it up as opposed to other programming languages. All right, now that's for that on introduction. All right, now 
we'll, for this class, of course, we are not going to be following this lesson by lesson because if we do that, we'll probably we'll not just leave here today. The major topics we want to focus on are variables, data types, um, yeah, variables, data types, functions, conditionals, loops, and so on and so forth. So let's start with variables now to get started for this project for this class what i'm going to do is i'll come to my desktop always do this whenever you want to start a new project it would help you organize your code don't have one don't always be keeping all of your code in one place so i'll create a new folder i'll call this folder python free class you can call this or let's just call it python 101 you can call this whatever you like, but I'll just call it that. Now, if you have Visual Studio installed on your PC and you followed the, the um, description that was given in the YouTube video, once you right click on, the fo on that folder, you should see the option. Now, you might notice that some things on my PC might be a bit different from yours. Don't worry about that. I'm using Windows 11, but don't worry about that. It's still the same thing. So. If you right click on the folder, you should see this option. Where is that? You should see this option to open the folder with VS Code. Okay, that's the option we are looking for. So I'll go ahead and click on that option. And VS Code should be up and running. Good. So I have that folder now, Python 101 open in VS Code. I'm just going to zoom in. So you guys can see what I have better. All right, is this bold enough? Can you see the name of my folder here? Hello guys, are you with me? Can you see the name of my folder here? All right, all right, great. So now, once you have this folder created, this is where you want to be creating all of your Python files inside. So the first thing we are going to do is let's create our very first Python file. Now, if you hover over this folder, the moment I do that, you will notice some options pop up here. These four options here. If I am not there, they won't show. It's only when my mouse moves there that they show. Now, the first option is to create a file. Create a file. The second option is to create a folder. The same way you create a folder in your in your desktop that's what this option is used for now what we want to do is create a file so i'll click on this option the first option that says new file i'll click on it and then the file i want to create now i'll just call it app that's what i want to name it you can name this anything you like but one thing you want to avoid is don't give space between the namings of your file just use one single word and if you must, if you want to join two words together, for example, I want to say um, new app. That's the name I want to call it. Instead of saying new app like this, I will say new underscore app. Okay, this is very important because even though it does work out well, it's actually a bad naming convention to give naming um, space between it, um, your file name. Mostly if that file is a coding or uh, it's code you have inside the file. So... I will just call this app now because this is a python file if you notice for those some of you have done other parts of programming before you will notice that every language has its own extension for example if you look at the videos on your laptop or the pictures on your laptop you will notice that at the end of the name there is always a dot something for videos you will have something like dot mp4 for audios you have dot mp3 for your pictures you have dot png that extension is very important because it helps your computer to understand the kind of file that document is and how to work with it. So in Python, the extension we use is .py. Did you notice the moment I put .py, VS Code changed the icon of the file here? Yeah? That's to tell you that, yes, I understand what this file is now. Great. Once we do that, we'll just hit enter and boom, we have our file created and we have it open here. Yeah. All right, so for maybe that has never written any piece of code in Python before you are new to Python, okay, this is the first thing I want to teach you how to do in Python. Now, this is not just Python related, okay? Whenever I'm teaching my class, I try to just 
let you know those areas that are general. Everything we are doing here is not just Python related. In other programming languages, there's a way you do them too. You might just do them a different way, but they are doable. All right. So now in every program that you are going to be writing, okay, there are two things you are always going to be doing. Two very important things. If you meet an application out there that is not doing these two things, then nobody will use it. The first thing is take in input to receive input. So most applications out there, every day they are receiving input. Let me give you an example. You are on Twitter. You are tweeting. So you woke up. Maybe you saw an accident in a particular place. You took your phone, your camera, you made a video. Then you wrote some things there. You hit tweet or post on WhatsApp. You post it on Facebook. You post it. By sending that details to Facebook, what have you done? You have sent input to Facebook. Okay? And funny enough, we do it every day. Now, whenever you are using an application and you send data to the application, what you have just done is you have imputed data to that application. So every application, every, I repeat, every application always takes in input unless they don't want to. But most applications would always take in input. Of course, there are different ways applications will take in input. Some might take in video input, some might take in audio, some might take in test. But just know that applications take in input. The second thing every application does is give out output or give back output. What Have you ever posted on Facebook before? Immediately you are done posting. What would Facebook give you? They will give you a reply that your post was successful. That is an output. They are giving you a feedback that ah, what you did was successful. Though. Because if you don't get that message, you'll be contemplating, ah, did this thing work out or it did not work out? So every application always would always take in input and would always give back output. Now, in Python, okay, depending on the kind of application you are building in Python, okay, there are different types of apps you can build in Python. You can either build a web app when you are using Django. You can build um, um, a GUI app where you will have an interface. You know, like this. Let me bring up this my calculator. This is my PC calculator. Okay, you're taking too much time. All right, generally, GUI apps, when you hear of the term GUI, GUI stands for Graphic User Interface. It just simply means an app that has an interface, like this app right now. Okay, you know this is a calculator app, but you can see that it has an interface. So this kind of app here is referred to as a GUI. Okay, this is a GUI app. Now, a G, if you can, of course, build something like this in Python too. Okay, so if you are doing a GUI app, there is a different way you might want to take in input and send back output. What I'm trying to say is, depending on the kind of app you are trying to build, there is always a way to take in input and a way to give back output. Now, the kind of app we are going to be looking at, since we are just learning Python in this case, is generally what we call a console application, like a command line application. What this means is that for people to be able to use it, they have to communicate with it using a command line interface. Let me show you what a command line interface looks like. For those of you that have ever used what we call C, a command prompt in your Windows PC or terminal in your Linux, this is like a command line interface. Okay, you can let me tr let me try to zoom in. Okay, good. This is like a command line interface where you'll be typing to interact with the app. When the app will ask you, what is your name? You type it there. When you are done, it asks you and so on and so forth. But this is a command line interface. So for most beginners, whenever you are learning a new programming language, the first type of app you would always learn to build in that programming language is a console app. But the good thing is, when you know that one very well, it's very easy to now learn other types of app because it's still the same concept, just a different interface. All right. So that being said, the kind of app we'll be building in this class now, okay, would be command line based app. But don't worry, since we are using Visual Studio Code, we don't have to bring up that black environment I brought up because in Visual Studio Code, we already have an inbuilt terminal. Let me show you the terminal. If I click on, okay, I think because I'm zoomed in, but those of you that are not zoomed in, I'm only zoomed in so that you guys can see my screen well. 
if i zoom out a bit you notice this option of terminal here exactly so we already have if i click on it you see the option to open a new terminal and if i click on it to open you see the terminal is here now you see it so you can type here so instead of us using that black interface i brought up now we'll be using this inbuilt terminal in visual studio here to interact with our code all right good now that we have said that the first thing we want to look at in python is how do we show output in our code you know i told you every app you are building okay every app you are building they are always good there are two things they would always be doing that one is sure the first one is what taking inputs the second one is give back output so in visual when we are using python okay how do we send outputs to this terminal how do we do that well you simply just use the print keyword the print function sorry you just say print and that's all then you now put in between this open bracket and closing bracket you put what you want to print there for example let me say i want to print a number 500 i'll just type 500 there immediately you do that you notice at the top here you have a play button this play button will show when you have a python file if you don't have a python file it won't show so if i go ahead and click on this play button now you can see my terminal is loading as if it's trying to do something and boom you just see my 500 out here do you see that so for maybe all those that have not done python before this is how you send out output did you notice now this is our code here this is the terminal and the 500 we have printed is showing here you can print out anything you like let me print my name so i'll do another print oops there's a wrong spelling there i'll do another print this time i'll put my name there oh let me put let me put take with save in there if i go ahead and save that hit this run again did you see printed 500 and it printed take with steven but i know some of you might have been conscious now that ah, uh -uh, <laughs> something there's something fishy here yeah. How come when I was printing 500, I did not put it in? Did you notice I put tech with Steven in quotation mark? Maybe, or did you notice that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Exactly. So, how come when I was printing 500, I did not put it in quotation mark? Now I'm printing tech with Steven, I'm putting it in quotation mark. Well, the reason mm -hmm. is based on the other next topic we want to talk on, which is data types. Data types. Now, you know, in programming, mostly those of you, I'm guessing most of you learning Python is majorly because you want to go into data science, data analysis, and so on and so forth. Now, in our world, I'm not talking about programming now, I'm talking about real life, okay? All of our data, all the information about you is actually, you can be broken down into different category. For example, if I ask you your name now, you will give me, your name is made up of words, right? Or letters of the alphabet. Like my name now, Steven, is made up of letters of the alphabet. But if somebody asks me my my age and I say S T E P H E N, does that make sense anymore? No, that's not age you're giving. Because when you ask somebody's age, what are you expecting? Are you expecting letters of the alphabet or a number? Who can help us out there? We are expecting a number because we know that age age is made up of number. Now, what I'm the point I'm trying to make here is that every programming, I'm sorry, every data about you, it can be classified into different category. Your name is made up of words, so we can refer to it as words or letters. Your age is made up of a number, be it and mostly an integer a, or a whole number. Okay, your phone number now is made up of numbers too although sometimes it can be missed when you put plus in front of it so in that case we can refer to that as an alphanumeric characters all in all what i'm what i'm trying to point out here is that every information about you if you think of it very well you can always classify them into one of these category a name i mean um, letters or alphabet numbers and so on and so forth again there's this other category that for example, if I ask you a question like, are you a boy? In that case, you can either give me a yes or a no. 
that is another type of data type on or another category on its own now in programming all these different categories we have there we have all of them in programming a number in programming we refer to numbers in programming as numbers so we still have numbers but some programming language now broke these numbers down for example in python we have different classes of numbers we have those we refer to as integers which are whole numbers okay integers are whole numbers we have those other ones we refer to as floats although some other programming languages refer to this as decimal or double what are these numbers these are numbers with a decimal point okay numbers that have for example when you say 25.6 1.2 that's a float okay so in python we have integers we have floats that is when we are talking about numbers now now what of when we are talking about letters well we have a, spe a special category called string we call it string in python what is a string well if if i'm to define a string okay in programming it might be a bit confusing but just take a string to be anything that is made up of letters okay or if it's going to be a mixture of letters and number then it's a string for example my name steven is a string um hello is a string um nigeria is a string as they say the name of any person animal place or thing okay is generally a string now in python when we want to write a string okay when we want to write a string in python the rules is this don't forget we are programming and in programming the, what we are majorly doing in programming is we are following rules and regulation you know as a programmer what you are basically doing is you are giving instructions to your to your computer to do something so when you are giving that instruction when you are giving that instruction you have to be specific about the instructions you are giving out you have to be specific about the instruction you are giving out okay so now one of the instruction is this that when whenever we are writing or whenever we are writing string in programming we must put that string within quotation mark we must put that string within what within quotation mark that is why i have tech with steven you know tech with steven in this case is a string now because it's made up of letters that is why i have it in quotation mark and that is because by default now every programming language have what we call a compiler what the compiler does is it takes this code you are writing okay let me take you back guys back a bit now in computer programming okay there are different types of programming language and different levels i don't want to go back too much but to state this fact you see all this english i'm writing here my computer does not actually understand this thing i'm writing it doesn't understand forget the fact that i'm if i code it if i hit play it will run it doesn't understand but you see under the hood there is something we call a compiler that is working the job of the compiler is to take the code i have written here and compile it to a language that my computer will understand who can remind us which language do machines understand anybody here which language those of us that are doing computer science or you have done anything computer related no level language binary binary exactly there is a language we call binary okay it's made up of digits zero and one this is the language computer understands if if you are reading anything in computer science or any um, income any um, machine related um article and you see something like zero one zero one 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 or zero one one zero or anything like that know that that is the binary language this is the only language computers understand zero here means off one means on zero can still mean true i mean sorry false and one here can mean true but the truth is, as humans, we, we can't be writing in this language. Imagine if, as you joined this class, you saw me writing 01100110. You could not even pick anything in the screen that you understand. Some of you would have left hours ago or minutes ago. Why? Because for we humans, writing in this language is tedious. 
That is why we have what we call the high level languages, which are languages like Python. These languages will allow us to write in a language we understand. In other words, English. So we can now write our code in English. Okay. And then there is a compiler under on that, on that, on that the underground or under the hood that is compiling that our English that we are writing to binary digits that the machine can understand. Because the truth is this, the machines don't understand our, our language. They don't understand this English and code that we are speaking. Machines don't. For example, I'm from Edo State, right? And let me see, let me say I don't know how to speak English. All I know is my language. And then I meet a Yoruba man who doesn't speak English too. All he does, all he knows how to speak is his language. Now, do you think I can communicate with that man? Is there a way for me and that man to communicate? The only language I speak is Edo. And him, he speaks English. I mean, sorry, he speaks Yoruba. And then we meet an Igbo man that all he knows how to speak is Igbo. Even if I want to give two of them a million naira each, as long as there is a language barrier, we'll just be staring at each other. Why? Because we don't understand each other. Now, that's the same problem we have here. The machines don't understand English, and we, we don't understand machine language. So, how, how do you think we can fix that problem? You know, we have an Edo man, we have an Igbo man, we have a Yoruba man that they can't understand each other. How do you think we can fix that problem? Well, we can get what we refer to as an interpreter. Some of us have been to our Nigerian churches now. So when the word interpreter will not be foreign to us, when the pastor will say today, interpreter will say loni and so on and so forth. Now, what is the interpreter doing? The interpreter is trying to translate whatever the pastor says into a language the congregation will understand more. So in programming, we have those things we refer to as translators the job of this translator is to translate the program we have written in our own language which is english to binary digits for the system to understand so every time you see somebody programming and he hits this play button the moment i hit this play button what the system is doing under hood is actually translating all the english i've wrote, written all this code i've written to binary digits for the system to understand that is just that. So I don't want to go too much into that, else we'll not live here today. But that is just that. Now, back to our strings. Now, it is a law in most programming language. Okay, this is acceptable in all programming language. Whenever you want to write a string, what is a string? Words. Whenever you want to write words, you must put them in quotation mark. Okay, you must put them in quotation mark. It is the law there. If I take away this quotation mark now, come and see trouble that I will find here. Let me take away the quotation mark. Okay. Did you see that? The moment I took away the quotation mark, sorry, just a minute. Let me check that in making that noise. All right. Sorry about that. I'm back. Uh, where is everything? All right, sorry guys, I'm back. Can you hear me? All right, good. So now you notice the moment I took away this quotation mark right here. Everywhere now you you notice this error here, and that's because the compiler already recognizes that ah this thing I what is this I can't I don't understand what this person is writing here. But notice the moment I put quotation mark in it, boom. Um, uh, the moment I put it inside quotation mark, boom. You recognize it and everything is good to go. So whenever you see anything in quotation mark here, this thing is referred to as a what? A string. But then why is it that when I write number, I don't have to put number in quotation mark? Well, that's because our compilers understand what numbers are. They can actually recognize what numbers are. That is why that is like that. All right? So, that is for that. If anybody has a question regarding that, please ask now. No questions. I guess that means we, we fully understand that. Perfect. All right. With that now said, with that now said, if I go ahead now, 
let's try to write okay i was expecting a question from you guys now the question the question is this i just told you that whenever you're writing letters you must put it in quotation mark right but if you notice when i wrote print here i did not put it in quotation mark and the system did not complain did you notice that i mean it's p-r-i-n-t not letters or alphabet they are but i did not put it in quotation mark and the system is not complaining why well it's simple now for those of you know in, in in english in english language we have these things we call register how many of us remember what register is in english language D these special words that are used in every field so every field have some common words that they use now in programming languages just like register we have what we call keywords or we call them special words keywords now keywords are these words that are written in the compiler memory of his, of a programming language and because it has been written in the memory the compiler understand those words when he see it so it will not complain about quotation mark not being there for example print the compiler already know what print what the word print is because you know it's print we are using to print something to this our console here i mean to our terminal here right so the compiler so whenever the compiler see the word print you say oh he wants to print to the console no problem i know what that is but if i come here now i write my name steven the next thing the compiler will ask is who is steven why because steven steven as a word is not in its memory and that is why if i want him to now accept it i can go ahead and throw steven in quotation mark oh you will now say okay well i know that can be a string i don't care what is inside the string but as long as i've seen the quotation mark that is a string do we catch that okay maybe are you with us So from what you just said now, okay. even without putting that string, you write uh, what's the cost something like a name with a quotation mark. Yes. And you give and you try to execute the command with these people. No, if you write if if I execute this now, it will print Steven. You know, it will it will print five hundred and take with um, Steve, but it won't print this uh, Steve. Uh, the reason being okay. that in order for you to print, how you need to do it is put that thing you want to print inside mm. curly print oh, okay. close to print that's when it will print if i run this now oh. it will print steven okay. but it won't just complain about steven because it knows yeah, steven yeah, yeah. is now a string yeah. all right okay so we have looked at we have looked at two data types so far one are numbers which can be integers or floats that is numbers like 50.0 okay another common one is string okay string which is anything in quotation mark now in python the quotation mark doesn't have to be double quote single quotes will still work okay oh single quotes will still work but in other programming languages okay like c sharp those there are some languages we call strongly typed languages those are languages that don't forgive you okay you know those kind of street <laughs> street parents <laughs> that you can't fuck up with uh -huh. we have languages like that in c sharp now you can't do like this see you can't use single quote because in actual fact when you want to use single quote it means you just want to have one single character inside it did you see that this is what single quotes should actually be for and that is why in languages like c sharp and i think java too you can't use single quote for more than two characters if you use single quotes, they are expecting you just put one letter inside of it. If you put more than one, it's to start complaining that, hey, sorry, <laughs> that you are doing is not right. Which means you must go change it to what? Double quote. But in Python, Python is a loving programming language. It's very forgiving. You can use single quotes for even a very long <laughs> word and it will allow you. But me, I'm using to always throwing in double there because I use those other languages. They don't flog me tire, so they don't master me. Uh -huh. So and you have like you want to like uh, maybe I am. Uh -huh. I uh -huh. We'll still go to that part of the string. Oh, well, let's talk about it now. Thank you for bringing it up. Now, the good use of having a lot of ways to print out a string is that 
sometimes you might want to print out strings that have apostrophes for example um i am a boy or am you know that i i am apostrophe s yes, right how do you do that well let's try yeah. to print that out let me say i want to say something like i'm a boy right something like this is what i want to print out i am a boy okay this is what i want to print out or mary said mary said she's or we want to say something like she's a girl or she's a nigerian if anybody still the do you get that now because of this apostrophe yes here now if i put this into if i want to print this out in python right now because i already have an apostrophe here i can't use single quotes anymore to start my string and end my string do you know why because in python whenever python sees a quotation mark be it single quote or double quote it will take it as the beginning of a string and when it sees another quotation mark after that one it will take it as the end of the string do you know what that do you know what that means for us now it means python is only recognizing she here as a string why because he saw a single quote opening and a single quote closing which means these other ones now we shall be waiting in b so in this in this in this kind of situation now how can we fix this well what we can do to fix this is instead of starting with a single quote we start with a double quote and we end with a double quote in this case now the moment python sees a, a double quote is until it sees the next double quotes before it will know that's the end which means this one now will be allowed so this yeah. double quote now and this double quote now this marks the beginning here this marks the end do you get that <laughs> but now what if what if in this case where i want this apostrophe here to be double quote how can i fix this now well what i can do no. is start with a single quote and end That's with a good. single quote do you get the trick there yeah exactly so just know that whichever quotation mark you start with a single quote the next single quote python we see it will take it as the end and if we start with a double quote the next double quote python we see it will take it as the end so that way you can use that to um make your work flexible although there's another way of um overcoming this but i don't want us to dive too deep into other topics that are not in today's topic so we'll just go with what we have here all right so we have talked about strings we've talked about numbers now the other data type i want us to quickly talk about is this data type that we refer to as booleans if i ask you a question now are you a nigerian you know you have one or two answers to give me either a yes or no right you can't tell me in between you can't give me any other answer you either give me a yes or no so in programming sometimes you want to store booleans as a result well in python we refer to them as bool okay bool did you see if you look at this pop-up that vs code gives it says this returns true when the argument is true false otherwise so we have boolean data type in python which can either be true or false so this is another data type in python so so far we have looked at three data types strings numbers and booleans and those are the three we are majorly going to be looking at in this class now now that we are done with that let's talk about the other topics okay before we talk about the other topics let me introduce you to what we refer to as comments in python comments let me introduce you to comments now sometimes when you are coding okay you might want to drop notes for yourself these notes might be like reminders okay you just want to drop a note for yourself just a note now normally in your coding environment you are not allowed to write any foreign thing for example let me come and write my name here steven did you see where, where i put my name let me run this program did you see i get an error if you look at my terminal did you notice it says there is a trace back 
the most recent call, there is a file error in line four. It's pointing to line four. Did you notice it said line four here in my app.py? Mm -hmm. Line four. If I go to line four, what's in line four? Steven. Now, whenever you are writing code, the only thing you are allowed to write inside this your code is only valid code. And by valid code, I mean code that the compiler will understand. You can't just come here and come and paste an essay about yourself and expect it to run. It is not allowed. But the truth is this. Sometimes, as humans, not even sometimes, we humans, we tend, we tend to forget things over time. Okay, you might learn this now, and if you never come back to it, you forget it. So sometimes, when you want to write, when you are coding, you might want to leave a message for yourself in your code. How many of us have seen this meme running around where a developer will say, Three months ago, when I wrote this code, me and God understand. But now, now only God understand. Why? That's because sometimes you might you might write code, and after a while, you will forget why you wrote a particular line of code. So, what we have in programming, we have this thing we call comments in programming. A comment is a way for you to drop a message for yourself that when you come back to, you can use it to remember why you wrote that particular line of code. Okay. And the good thing about comment is that your programming language compiler recognizes a comment when it meets it, so it will ignore it. For example, this is my name, Steven, that I had here that was making my code crash. You see that this is crashing. It says, name, Steven, is not defined. This program is crashing right now. Watch what happens. If I make Steven a comment, to make a line of code a comment in Python, you use hash. If I put hash here now, did you see the color changes? And if I run this program right now, it's no more crashing, it's running fine now. So the moment I put hash here, I'm telling Python that you see, this is a comment. Ignore it. This is only a message for myself. It's not a piece of code. So just ignore it the way it is. And Python will actually ignore it because I have marked it as a comment. So we have comments too. Okay, for example, if you're learning now, if this is your first time of seeing the print, I wanted to drop, oops, uh, can you guys still see my screen? Yes. Yeah. All right, I think ouch, my inverter is making noise. Please just give me a minute to fix that. I don't know why it's shaky. Just give me a minute okay. to quickly fix that, please. Mm. 